Tarkov is one of those things where it's like, I'm way more terrified to talk to my team in a Valorant game than I am yeah. to VoIP, right? Like, I, I will VoIP. And I've been getting better about it. You know, I have my oo-woo buttons on my soundboard <laughs> that I'll go around and I, I oo-woo to at people to see, like, what, like, if it makes them push me or something like that. But I don't, I don't run into as much toxicity anymore, yeah. I think. And I think it's because there are so many wonderful, like, women in yeah. the Tarkov community that a lot of people have, like, kind of changed their mindset on that. Yeah, absolutely. People like Endra too, you know, like yeah. she, like she has such a huge following, and I know so many people that come came from her community that you know, like every they're like, yeah, every time I, I meet a girl in Tarkov now, like I'm like they're like, you know, I'm I try to be nice because I I've seen how crappy mm -hmm. it can be, and I'm like, yeah, because when yeah. it happens like live in front of you, you're not someone that's ever experienced that, you know, and you watch someone else have to experience it, and it just sucks. <laughs> Welcome to Tardux, a podcast for content creators to come on and share their stories, experiences, and advice. And today I'm excited. I have Miss Trash. Welcome. Hi. <laughs> Thank you for doing this. Really nice to meet you. Thanks for inviting me. All right. So the way we get things started is uh, three random questions. So are you ready? Yeah. All right. So first one, you can live in any state. Where are you living? Washington. All right. Favorite movie? Fight Club. And so this one's a good one. So if you had a personal theme song that played every time you walked into the room, what is that song? Hyper Hyper, Electric Cowboy. All right, there we go. <laughs> All right, so welcome to the pod. And uh, so how we ended up getting together is Triangle Face, uh, you know, recommended you and, and called you out. And how did you end up meeting her? I can't even remember the first time we properly got to game, but we met through a friend forever ago. And I was like, I, I I hung out, I talked to her one time and I was like I want to be friends with this person this person is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> she cracked me up and I was like yes her. <laughs> I love I love her. She's one of my she's one of the my go to friends that I talk to confide in for everything outside of streaming and I just I love her to death. All right, so first of all, where does the name come from? Um, so. Back in college, my friends and I all wanted to uh, make like a YouTube channel, kind of be like Fitz and his friends kind of thing. So we all uh, we all played Siege at the time and we all wanted to come up with a name that could fit us, like all of us. And so my name was actually moderately trash at the time because I we used to joke that I was like the most average on the team. Like I wasn't good. I wasn't bad, at, but I had really good call outs. But my frames were like really behind because I was playing with a TV hooked up to a really crappy <laughs> PC. So, <laughs> and so, uh, and then I had a couple of friends that they were allegedly trash, completely trash. Like that was like the whole trash okay. clan. Um, but when I started streaming Tarkov, I wanted to put like TTV in my name. Um, and I was like, moderately trash is kind of a mouthful. So I just shortened it to mistrash. <laughs> okay. There we go. <laughs> so you know so what is your background before you hit the go live button you know what's where do you you know where you come from and how'd you get here um i moved a lot um and then right before covid i had been living in alabama for quite a few years because uh, that's where i did college was at uab uh, for chemistry i was supposed to be practicing for my mcat because i had just graduated right when quarantine hit oh, wow. and when quarantine hit I had lost my job, had to move like all kind of in a really short span of time. And so I had moved to Georgia pretty last minute with some friends that I'd known for like a decade through Xbox and um, got my stimulus check and my my PC had like just about died because I had accidentally poured, uh, <laughs> I had poured two Dr. Pepper cans into a really big cup and mm -hmm. then slapped that cup straight into my pc oh, no. and it worked still because i'd cleaned the crap out of it <laughs> but it did not work well so i was like well i got the stimulus check you know i already like moved everything's good i'm gonna use it to buy a pc and my friend that uh because i was still like i said i was trying to work on youtube at the time yeah my friend was like you should stream on twitch and i had i had a twitch account i think for drops for a game like for forever ago but i never used twitch like i didn't know anything about twitch he's just like yeah like maybe you should see. i'm like okay so i watched like a youtube video on like how to work obs and i just started going i started streaming oh wow <laughs> holy cow <laughs> i had no idea about anything on the site <laughs> 
All right, so we'll dig into the streaming aspect in a minute. So let's start back at video games. Where did video games start for you? Um, World of Warcraft with my dad when oh, I was nice. eight, I think. Uh, there's actually a, a, a distinct memory of me playing on his account, going around to strangers and accidentally selling all of his linen to people because I didn't know any better because I it, just a kid on his account. Right. And me and him literally getting in an argument about it and my mom being like you are arguing with a child right now <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> he's selling my linen <laughs> so, that was my first game my stepdad also plays games too he has like the nes his like like original zelda was his favorite game so like there's like i have like a night where we i think we played that literally all night and he's like no no you gotta walk into that tree it's a secret like just stuff like that and i played a lot of um single player games usually yeah really dove into multiplayer with halo reach yeah i think which would have been maybe about seventh grade for me and just kept going from there <laughs> and over the years what have been some of your favorite games that like really stick out um my top five games i'd probably say portal 2 mirror's edge heavy rain i'd probably put tarkov up there yeah and then um, a new edition, Baldur's Gate. Oh, okay. The new Baldur's Gate. That has insta- I, I put 400 hours in a month. I was like, I got to go. Wow. And now what about Baldur's Gate puts it up there at one of your top games? One of my favorite things about gaming growing up, because like I said, I played a lot of single player games, yeah. is like really, really rich story. Um, a hobby of mine that I don't talk about too, too often. Uh, I like to write a mm-hmm. lot. And so Baldur's Gate, I think I had like a lot of respect for the game because there was a lot of like really well thought out storylines and like plot like or character arcs and everything throughout the game. You know, the idea that obviously like I can kind of control the game story in a way was really, really cool and fascinating because um, I had never played a game like that before. I never really like delved into like D&D or anything yeah. before Baldur's Gate. I this like some like the characters were just so rich with story. The voice actors did such an amazing job, and it I I was just like I'm hooked. This is awesome. Like I'm like I'm I feel like I'm like watching a TV show right now, but yeah. also not because I'm <laughs> playing. Right. Yeah. Ah. And now you know for your writing is is there a certain genre you like to write? And like you know are you more like fantasy or true fiction? What's you know true crime? I mean. Uh, I wrote a lot of romance growing up, really cringy, like, <laughs> gir- like super girly. Uh, I think my first book that I had written was a sci-fi romance, and then I think like the last one I wrote was like a fantasy. Yeah, but all romance. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and is that your you know your type of book you prefer to read, or you know what are some of your favorite books? Horror as well a lot, like uh, horror movies are like mm-hmm. my favorite. So I have like a lot of Stephen King on my shelf. This one book I read called Eleanor and Park, I'd say is probably one of my favorite books. Yeah. It's just like a really, really sweet little like awkward kid romance. And I like that because I'm incredibly awkward. <laughs> um, but I, I'd probably just say Stephen King as a whole. Yeah. <laughs> instead of just one book, Eleanor and Park are probably up there for my favorite books. All right. I read a lot of mangas too. I, I'm a huge dork. Nothing wrong with that. A second ago, you talked about D&D, and with the popularity of D&D exploding, any thoughts of you know doing something in that you know from a streaming standpoint or joining some of the other creators that are you know running with that right now? Um, I actually did a one-shot um, not too long ago with Nixia, her sister, and Jay. Um, I had a blast. I, I probably was a little bit more quiet and like reserved because I this was my first time and we did stream it so it was like a little more nerve-wracking because i was like oh my gosh like now i have people watching me um but it was a lot of fun and i think i definitely would love to get into it more um i know there's a lot of people that are streaming it and like meeting up for it and that one's a little harder because i'm kind of i'm i'm in iowa which is like a little away from most (laughs) of my friends but um i think if there were more opportunities like you know through like webcam and stuff like that to do it i would totally jump in i had a blast yeah i'm sure it wasn't easy you're learning something for the first time while you're streaming it at the same time yeah you know speaking of streaming what was that first game you fired up and streamed with i think i started on siege we i we were playing siege and warzone at the time so i kind of was like bouncing between the two yeah um I, one of my friends was still trying to convince me to play Tarkov because he had explained it to me and I said, that game sounds terrifying. I don't want to play that game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yep, absolutely. And that, that first time you went, you, you hit the live button, you know, and you had strangers coming in. You know, nothing really prepares you for that. Yeah, not at all. No, nope. just kind of like, hi. <laughs> I guess I'm doing this. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't and, do with my hands. Right, and most people are like, you know doing is like okay what do i say to these people i want them to stay and like you know you start talking about everything you know oh here's a ball or here's this and yeah. <laughs> uh when i first started streaming too i wasn't planning on like using a webcam or anything like that yeah. so when i i i think my first at least like few months i had no webcam and so it was just all my gameplay and then it was mostly just me joking around with my friends and like cackling it doing dumb stuff and cod because i was not the best of cod <laughs> <laughs> uh, played a lot of 2v2s yeah okay and now you know <laughs> over the years of streaming what are some of the you know tougher things about hitting that go live button every day um imposter syndrome is awful yeah uh i actually back at, uh, at twitchcon i talked to quite a few friends about that because i had taken a i'd kind of taken a step back out of the tarkov community for a little bit i needed a break from tarkov because i was getting to a point where i was getting so frustrated while playing the game mm -hmm. that i kind of like forgot why i had fun with the game to begin with and i think it was because i was mostly like in my head at the time too so every time i got on it was just like the stress of like oh gosh oh gosh oh gosh um you know, I'm like, everyone hates me. There's no way. Like, I'm like, I'm playing terrible. I like, I, 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 why would anyone want to watch my stream? Like, just stuff like that. Yeah. Getting really getting into your head and then making it so like, I'm just like over time not having fun anymore. And I just like, I need a break from Tarkov, which is when I kind of really started delving into like League and Baldur's Gate. And so I'd say like that is one of the the tougher things is like fighting your own head mm -hmm. a lot of the time. Yeah. You know, like you, you're your own worst enemy kind of thing. TwitchCon, I think, was one of those things that really brought my motivation back also now why everyone's been seeing me full swing back in a tarkov so i'm like i remembered why i love this <laughs> yeah it's definitely a special game but yeah. you know you, you t it was it's probably not easy because you know you were you know sort of tarkov was your main game for a while mm -hmm. and now switching it up so that's you know that's a, a you know a path a lot of content creators you know struggle with is like if i switch games who's going to be sticking around and and that yep. you know that's not an easy thing to to start that definitely adds to the imposter syndrome a lot too when you go live and you're used to like you know maybe like your viewers were here or your sub count was here just anything like that and you start comparing the numbers too much and you start getting in your head and it was one of those things where at one point i'd take a step back and i'm like i'm not on my main game right now you know like i have people that are here for me and they support mm -hmm. me no matter what and we need to just be grateful with this and keep going like stop digging into yourself and stop yeah. comparing the numbers like the numbers will do what they're gonna do but it's you have to do what you're gonna do yep and you, you can't stream and not be happy and yep. uh you know the other aspect of that too is you know your pe the people who have been watching you play tarkov they come in there frequently they're there to watch you play they're there for you yep. it's your community so switching it up you're like you said you're going to lose some people but some people are going to be there yep. because you've of what you've built i had quite a few people that were watching me go through all sorts of different games while I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And, yeah. you know, I like couldn't be more grateful for them. And I've seen a lot of faces come back since I've got, come back to Tarkov. And those faces that weren't even like, oh, yeah, hey, I didn't leave because of Tarkov. I, you know, like real life, you know, I got, yeah. had, had to go do some stuff, but I'm back. And I'm just like, OK, like, you know, it's like it's one of those things. It's like I don't need to be taking everything personal. And I don't need right. to be thinking that it's all like my fault like yep. all the time. Absolutely. And now on the other side of that, what's been some of the high moments? So, you know, some of the memorable moments you look back, it's like, wow, okay, that was fun. Um, I think just the friends that I've made uh, have just been so awesome. A lot of like my favorite streaming related moments, I guess, are technically not even really on stream. It's more just like hanging out with like, you know, like try and hay bales and a call after stream and all of us just shooting the shit. And yeah. Just realizing that like I have like I've made so many like genuine connections which is it's it's i know a lot of people feel like can feel insecure about making friends through the streaming community because mm -hmm. you know a lot of people are kind of like doing the rat race and stuff like that so like that can obviously be stressful in its way but i'm like very fortunate that i feel like i've made i've made some really really good genuine connections and friends and you know being able to do things like twitchcon and like see them face to face and like see like oh my gosh like this like this is a person that i've been friends with for the last like three years you just oh 
just just stuff like that's really cool yeah. and then i mean there's we've had a couple like subathons too where it was just i think there was one subathon in particular that i think of every time where i'm like oh this was really fun it was because i had we had like one of the redemptions was to bust out skyrim which is i mean what it's one of my favorite games <laughs> yeah <laughs> um which actually i didn't even put that in my top five because i didn't even think of it but skyrim's always been in my top five so i can't believe i disrespected it by not even putting it up there <laughs> And we just, so we pulled it out for the subathon, and everybody was just like downloading it because I was playing it. Yeah. So then everyone in chat is like, "Oh yeah, I'm in this area. Oh yeah, I'm in this area. Oh yeah." And there's just like everyone's geeking out over Skyrim, and I'm like, "This is so awesome!" Because <laughs> Skyrim again, like, was what my my fa- like my favorite game forever. Yeah. And I was just like, "This is awesome." Something you you sort of brought up is like you know you're talking you know after your stream talking to Hay Bales and Triangle Face. That's an important thing to have, having friends, you know, who are content creators that, you know, off stream, you can talk to them about yep. some of the trouble, some of the things you run into that IRL friends who don't have any idea what the streaming thing oh, is yeah. can, you know, you guys can work with. Yeah, I I would say there's like some things that I've like during that time that I was going through all that imposter syndrome, getting in my head and stuff like that, too. You know, like that's one of those things where you can't really explain it to people that don't stream because when I, I don't when you explain it out loud some of it kind of just sounds dumb coming out of your mouth yeah because you, i mean a because i mean i'm sitting there kind of trashing myself so obviously it's gonna sound a little dumb anyways but there's just like the certain things where it's just like people who don't stream they just don't understand like the the full capacity of the behind the scenes yeah and so being able to like confide in my other streamer friends and then be like you know you realize you're just you're getting in your head and you need to get out of your head. And it's like, you're right. I do need to do that. IRL friends have no concept. They think of, you know, when you, you're streaming, oh, you're just playing the game. But there's so much yep. more around that, that yep. it's, it's you know, the stuff the your socials after, you know, making videos and just, you know, the anxiety of going live. There's so many aspects to it that it's just more than just playing a game on stream. I have really bad ADHD, really bad anxiety. So there's all, there's always that kind of stuff going on too. And every time, like I, I, I'm also a huge open book though. And I feel like that has made streaming pretty easy in that aspect where I'll get on and I'm like trying to be positive and maybe my anxiety is really bad that day. And I'm like, chat, I'm gonna be honest. I'm teetering an anxiety attack right now. And like, everyone's just always like, because I've always been so open about stuff like that. I feel like they're always really good at like dealing with me when i'm like yeah. that you know like they're like if you need like you know like i've sometimes had to just suddenly end stream because i'm just like i need to get off like my anxiety is just not having it today i gotta go but yeah. the next day everybody that was there that day they're still in, they're still in my chat and they're still they're, they're even asking me about how i'm feeling today you know like yeah. they're they're really supportive and now i also saw that you have your twitch partner you know do you remember where you were when you got that notification that you've you know, you've got that partner status Okay, so I didn't have my notifications on for my email. I don't, because I have like six emails. Because I try to like organize everything per email. It's so, it's it's really dumb. Anyway, <laughs> but, so I have like six emails. So I don't have my notifications on. And I think I opened up my Twitch account. And I was like, like looking at something in my about me. I had to like check something. I was like, maybe like making sure my PO box was the right address i can't it was just something silly like that like something small that i don't even really remember anymore because it's insignificant to what happened (laughs) but i open it and i look at my name and i like see there's like a check mark and i'm like what so then i race to my email and then i like find the email and i just i'm like laying in bed I, i had just woken up I mean, I was on a DJ schedule, so it's probably the afternoon, and I'm not I'm not supposed to just be waking up anyways. I'm in bed. I start screaming. I start crying. Oh. I, like, race out because I was living with my sister at the time, and I run to her, and I'm like, I got Twitch partner. I got Twitch partner. And she, like, she doesn't fully know what that is, but she's like, yay! Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome! <laughs> and what is that again? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> It was like a jump scare moment because yeah. I, I don't, I didn't have my notifications on. I'm like, this is what is going on. And I just lost it. And I think, cause they took the full two weeks to get back to me mm-hmm. and everyone I talked to, they told me that if they, like, if they take about that long, it's usually that preparing you for a no. And I was right. just like, Oh God. Okay. 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 And it was my first time, um, oh, wow. flying. I applied once over that, you know, from that first time you went go live to get that notification, what was there a certain event that you know helped 
draw you know viewers in or was it just a gradual increase of over time that you know sort of got you to that point and sustained that number to to qualify um let me think sometime before that i had done a subathon and pestily had rated um and like that kind of obviously like boosted up my numbers around the time i would say it was really gradual i feel like um I was looking at like Twitch Tracker a lot around that time, and I was noticing like it was like a, it went like this, like yeah. it was just constant, just going up. Like I, I every time I streamed, I would do something a little better, um, and viewers would go up like just a little bit each time. Um, I feel like I, it, it was the connections I'd made in Tarkov, you know, the the friends I'd been making. I was meeting a lot of people. I was hanging out in a lot of chats. Um, so. You know, like I was constantly like interacting with the community yeah. a lot, and which I think is really important. Um, and not, not in like a like you don't like you, not in like a you want to try to piggyback way. Like right. I'm not going to try to get into a chat and be like, "Hey guys, by the way, I'm on my BRB screen right now." Like I'm not, yeah. <laughs> but just just showing that you you are a part of the community and you're actually like engaging. We were doing movie nights in the Discord, and just I was trying to make sure that everybody like. I wanted I wanted to be the streamer, but I also wanted to be like the friend. Yeah. And, I think that that helped like with my connections a lot of just like making like genuine connections and making people like genuinely want to support me and yeah you know like lurk the stream watch like hang out and chat you know do whatever they're gonna do yeah um yeah because you don't want to you know come across as that person just trying to chase cloud or hey you know yeah. it's just you know i and i think i don't you know i like to i'm a half glass full type of guy that you know in the tarkov community for the majority it's it's a good place to be yeah they're yeah. very tight knit, very tight knit, and I love that so much. Like I, like I think Fudge and I were talking about that the other day because we made a group chat, um, or a uh, he made a Discord for everybody who's going to Loot Fest. Yeah, and he was just like, how quickly like twenty people hopped in, yeah. and he's just like, he's like, is there any other community that's like this? And I was like, I'm like, I've never been in any other community, so I don't know, <laughs> but it does. I don't feel like it. Like I watched this. Like there's, I mean, there's obviously always going to be drama no matter what. Right. You know, there's, there's real life is realizing high school is never fully like escaped ever yes. um but <laughs> but there i mean even in the tarkov community drama like i feel like the people that sometimes butt heads on live whatever they like they, they always either come back or they get to a point where they can at least like be civil yep and i see like people within like other communities i feel like they go for each other's throats and yep. i don't feel like anybody in tarkov is like that to yep. that extent and and I don't see the, you know, you see large streamers playing with smaller streamers and there's just, I, I don't see that in other, other yeah. communities and other games. Yeah. I, that was because I, there, I mean, there's been times where I've been like so insecure about reaching out and hanging like to play with people. Um, and that was before the check mark. Yeah. And it's like so intimidating to like befriend the people with the check mark when you don't have one. And then because you don't want them to ever think that you're there because of their check mark you don't want them to think that you're there because you want their viewers like you like yeah. i just when i first started playing tarkov i had this is another thing uh so i around that when i was living in georgia i had a huge falling out with my roommates and everybody that i was living with um and so then it was like a really isolating experience and yeah. so i had really grasped on to the tarkov community because i was just like looking for friendship and connection right. and just like an escape from my real life like yeah. i I could care less about the numbers at that point. I was streaming all the time. I was I have like every single day, to 12 to 14 hours because I just didn't want to be home. Right. And so I'd, I'd wake up, I go, okay, go straight to my computer and go yeah. back, go to where my, my new friends were, right. Where my connections were. And, um, that like, again, that I think that's what helped yeah. with streaming and everything like that is because I am a, an open book B I am really way too honest really bad at lying and then see like just i just want friends yeah <laughs> oh. well it's it's funny just recently i've seen a couple of posts one from julie and one from Valian, talking about sort yep. of that subject of like wanting to play but hesitant to play with somebody because they don't want the whole reaching out thing and it's just it, yeah it's 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 tough i i the way that I talked about it, I can't remember who I said it to when we're all at TwitchCon. I'm like, we're all just a bunch of awkward kids that play video games and we all just want to be friends. So like that's, yep. at the end of the day, that's all it is. Adding into that whole, you know, like you said, you're going to TwitchCon. Here you are, have you have all these awkward people. 
It's like, yep. you know, what is it like? Is it like that first high school dance where everybody's in the corner? It's like, okay, you need somebody to break the ice. I feel like Vegas was good for that. Yeah. Solely for the fact that you show up to the casino, someone gets a drink in them, they like loosen up a little uh -huh. bit, and boom, like conversation just starts flowing. Yeah. I know that I'm extremely awkward in person. Like I'm the person that's like kind of like the little standing emoji <laughs> off to the side, not speaking to anybody. I did that last TwitchCon. Um, but you get like just one drink in me, and yeah. I'm just like, I could talk to anybody, I'll approach anybody. <laughs> and so Vegas was good for that, but then also on the other side of like at the convention, um, Arena was such a huge, like had mm. such a huge booth, was such a huge thing. And I feel like um, that made conversation really easy because we all had something that we were geeking out over together. Yeah. The San Diego TwitchCon, we met all outside for the one day. And then there was like hanging out at like some of the, like the bars or the restaurants or anything, right. which is like all like really small. And that was really good to hang out with people. Um, because it was easier to like navigate like everybody was like going this direction there's not a lot of options right um but all meeting outside and stuff like that i remember san diego twitchcon being where i forgot english words when talking to half the people like i remember friendly guy was recording people just being like hey you know introduce yourself and i literally forgot my own name oh, like i i was incredibly awkward i met aqua and i think i went hi bye and just <laughs> left like i i could not talk to people yeah. in the slightest and there were so many people that i like i wanted to genuinely talk to like i got to talk to pestily a little bit which whenever i was getting words out yeah you know and it was just like it, it was just it was one of those scenarios where you're kind of set up to be awkward because everyone's just kind of like standing there like standing okay, around, hi. there's nothing else to look at everyone's there there's right. nothing to like like no easy conversation starters except hi i've literally watched your stream for the last couple of years what's up like right really puts you on the spot whereas i feel like the environment in vegas as like chaotic as it was like i don't think i'd ever do a twitch con in vegas again i think <laughs> i think that was that i did the one and i'm good but it definitely like the environment was a lot easier to uh reach out in and just to initiate conversation something. Yeah, yeah, because like, well, Vegas, like either it's, you know, you got some great people watching, like you see, the, you know, some old lady walk by with purple hair. It's like, holy cow. And, you know, just something to initiate conversation or just, you know, the whole environment is just you're you're perfectly. You, that's a great answer of why, you know, Vegas was so good for, you know, for all the awkwardness that goes along with, you know, the creators. How if somebody's hitting that go live button for the first time, what kind of advice would you have for them? um just be yourself the best you can um that's i feel that's the biggest thing is there's a lot of people that really try to focus on putting on a front and if you do that for too long it gets exhausting and it's really hard to keep going live like i said like i used to stream like 12 to 14 hours yeah minimum just just because i didn't want to not stream right but I never got exhausted with it because I was just getting on and I was, I felt like I was just hanging out with my friends. Like I was yeah. just being me and unapologetically me. And I, I, that's something I feel like I've always done growing up that maybe made it easier for me to stream is that I've always been the kid that like, I, I will do what I want to do. And like, I don't care what anyone else is right. doing. Yeah. Um, made a lot of enemies in elementary school doing that. So you would, but, <laughs> <laughs> but and now, you know, do you still stream that many hours a day or have you cut it back to, you know, more of like a six to eight hours? I consider six to eight like a normal amount for me. Yeah. I feel like if I, if I'm streaming and maybe like my anxiety is bad that day, I'm a little tired. I always aim for six hours. That's yeah. like my new minimum number. But I'll let myself go longer if I feel like I I'm like in a groove. Yeah. Like I think one of my first streams back from TwitchCon, I went for like 13 because I was having fun with Tarkov and I yeah. think I was on to like 5 a.m. and I was like, I don't care. We're playing Tarkov. Let's go. <laughs> Excellent. And now, you know, when you went out to TwitchCon, this is the, this just seems like a lot of creators sort of like, you know, nightmares, like they're leaving their stream. What is going to be like to coming back? Taking vacations is not a, a you know, a lot of people do in the in the content creation space. That's I, I've always heard that from everybody. They're like, I'm scared to take a break. Just that's that's the biggest thing. But I've always said, I'm like, breaks are so important yeah. for you because if you don't take that break, then it's like that time period that you should have been taking a break 
is now twice as long as that break would have been where you were in like a rut. Yeah. Because you didn't take that, like you didn't take those couple of days. So now you have like two weeks where everything is kind of off, but it's because you're off. Like you need that break. Yep. Um, and I've, I, I, well, so college, I went to, I went to school originally for biomedical engineering, but then swapped to chemistry, was planning on med school. Yeah. So there's, I've been in the space where I knew like that, I knew when I needed a break. Yeah. Because I would burn out, obviously taking endless amounts of chemistry classes and like all this, this math mm-hmm. out and like just all the studying hours. Like it's just, I had to know when it's like, I need a break or I'm not retaining anything. I need a break or my attitude's not there. I need a break. My motivation's not there. Yeah. So that's one of the, I feel like one of those things I learned from school that I like relate over it. And I've always been a huge advocate for that. Like my, I mean, I have a couple of my girlfriends that'll come to me. They're like, I don't know. Like, I'm like, take a break. Just do it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Mom, the crap out of everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and now if you didn't discover content creation right now, what would you be doing? Something in probably the chemistry be, field or? Yeah, I, I probably would still be studying for my, my MCAT and I would probably be doing my master's because I was originally going to do my master's in chemistry because um, I started school a little young. I started college at 16 because oh, wow. I, I skipped a grade in high school. Uh, I was dual enrolled in high school, but I was at a school where I didn't need to put a lot of like effort into some of my classes. I remember one of my classes, I think I slept through most of it and every test I still got a hundred on. Like it was, it was, but with that mindset and then dual enrolling at the community college where you have to actually study, but I'd yeah. never had to study before. My grades weren't the best because I had to learn how to study, never knew how to do that. Yeah. Um. And so I thought about doing my master's program because between like my GPA for like, you know, my dual enrollment or my undergrad, I was like, I feel like I could do a lot better, mm-hmm. especially like with everything that I've learned because yeah. I had to grow up really, really fast. And obviously doing that while trying to maintain a really solid med med school looking GPA was incredibly difficult. I bet. So I, I was planning on doing my master's and studying for my MCAT and then trying to get to med school after doing a master's program. I'd probably be doing that right now. Now, do you see yourself jumping over to that at some point down the road or sort of see how far, you know, creation can take you? I've been tossing that up a lot lately, actually, too. Um, But the biggest thing for me was I feel like streaming really opened my eyes to exploring my 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 actual interests versus what I think everybody else wants me to do. Yeah. Like I was always like the 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 smart kid growing up, but I've never felt like the smart kid. Like but everyone told me that I was, so that I just did the smart kid thing. Right. I I stopped playing soccer. I stopped doing my dance class. I stopped writing so much because I had to go take all my AP classes and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, I I put so many of my hobbies on the side. And I feel like when COVID and quarantine and all that stuff hit like it it allowed me like into it to put into a space where I took a step back and I was just like what do I want to be doing yeah what could I be doing and then how how can I do both yeah. and I I definitely don't want to quit streaming anytime soon I definitely want to see like as how far I can go with it mm-hmm. but I think I, I want to start um getting it into a spot where I can make my content off Twitch. I can maybe stream a little less on Twitch mm-hmm. so that I could try to figure out what else what else I'd like to do. Yeah. Nice. And um, and you found a happy space right now. You're happy doing, you know, like yeah. you said, quarantine let you find find something that makes you happy versus, you know, what you thought in your head you just need to do. Yeah. Cuz like I said when I was a kid, I uh always was interested in like making videos i think there's like videos of me in like fifth grade somewhere lingering on youtube making these like sims videos animal crossing fashion show videos like we every time there was a school project that like was like oh you can make a video if you want we always did wrote a full script always really there's a paul revere video of me somewhere (laughs) um and i just i always loved making content i always loved just being a big goofball even if no one else found me funny i always found myself hilarious so i was just that was just something that i always really enjoyed and it's really cool to like see how i could actually incorporate that to my life and like do it for work like i don't know if that was really awesome but like you said you took a break from tarkov and that lets you be comfortable of you know switching off of games mm-hmm. 
so that makes streaming a little less, you know, stressful, hopefully, you know, these days. I, what I started with, what I re- initially was like, I need less Tarkov in my life. Um, it, it was because I was getting really tired of playing weekend Tarkov. Yeah. And so I started just doing horror games on the weekends. And that was like the perfect break for me because it was like, I love Tarkov, but I like it during the week. (laughs) (laughs) And but then that also kind of like get like allowed me to kind of like dip my feet in into a different genre and then see like who hangs out, who likes this, who likes that, you know. And then I would go from weekends on like horror games to then sometimes maybe we'll do League instead and seeing how many of like the community plays League, which is an ungodly amount of people. (laughs) <laughs> but <laughs> and now speaking of Tarkov what was your path to the game you said you some friend recommended it to you and you said nope and was it you know was it did he persist and say you got to try it or was there another path to it I I can't remember the caving moment I think it was because everyone else was playing it in the group and I was just like the FOMO started kicking in yeah. that like the fear of playing the game wasn't as strong as the FOMO um so i joined in i like i think the tail end of a wipe like it was i played for a week mm-hmm. and then it wiped so i my first week was like t7s and oh, all sorts God, of stuff yes. like that. Yep. and then trying to learn these maps that it's so funny to think back to like how foreign customs felt versus like now customs is my comfort map like just think <laughs> think thinking like that is like so crazy. Like I I don't think I have as many hours as like as uh some of my friends online. Um, but I do. Ha- I, I mean I think I have like thirty seven hundred. It's still a lot. Yeah. But that's I know like obviously there's a lot of streamers that are all like five k ten k under their belt because I only ever played it on stream. I never I never played it off stream. So I you feel like that's probably the game on stream. Oh wow. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. That was. <laughs> embarrassing to say the least there's lots and lots of clips of me being absolutely bad at this game <laughs> which i guess goes along with the name miss trash but it's the i i used to make the joke that my name is like the biggest cop out because now if anybody tries to come in and talk crap i'm like you have to get more creative you can't right. come in and call me trash <laughs> oh that's awesome <laughs> And now, what is the hook the game has on you? Why do you keep, you know, you see you got, re- you know, you got refreshed at TwitchCon, but, you know, before TwitchCon, what is the, you know, why did you every day fire up that game for so many days to play it? I think there's obviously, like, the the obvious, like, you know, scientific reasons of, like, you know, like, the, the highs and lows that you feel are, like, some, like, I mean, they say in anything in life, anything that makes you feel like those highs and lows yeah. are usually really addicting things. So I think Tarkov was addicting in that in that sense, obviously. But I think the biggest thing that really captivated me with the game and made me actually want to learn it and then experience those highs and lows is just like the gunplay and everything like that. It would, felt so different than any other game that I I'd played, and yeah. I enjoyed it a lot. I I mean, I started back when there wasn't like a when the movement was just like an old labs movement kind of thing, right, you know, like you I was playing a little multiple cod, cases like, in your backpack and run around. And yeah. Jump. Yeah. <laughs> like I, I, I've, I've been playing it for a bit, but, um, so it's definitely, I mean, it's obviously changed over the years, but I feel like just the way that the guns are and like the shooting mechanics and movement and everything like that were always just like, so cool to me. The game looked really nice. Um, it felt cool playing a game that, I didn't have to just completely sprint around and everything like that. And one, I mean, one of the thing, I mean, I, I growing up again, as somebody that likes single player games, um, setting is always a huge thing. And there's like a couple of times that I've played Tarkov that I've literally just sat down and like looked at the map. I'm like, this looks so nice. I'm like, I like, I don't, yeah. no one ever really talks about it enough, but this is a really pretty landscape right here. This sun, the sun is setting right here. Oh, and yeah. now, Path, path to sh- or path to lighthouse looks beautiful, yeah. like just stuff like that. Absolutely, I, you know, down on shoreline, looking out at Scav Island and the sun setting, or at night. Yes. Yeah, there's so many great. It's like, like you said, you sit there, it's like, damn, this game looks good. Yep. And, and some- I mean, I played COD and stuff like that, like I said, yeah. but and those maps obviously are huge and extensive, but you never like you never have like a moment to like take a second and like look. And I feel yeah. like with Tarkov, it's all like. 
same thing with Baldur's Gate where I felt I felt I got hooked because I could kind of navigate my own story and control it. That's yeah. kind of how I felt with Tarkov because it's like I'm controlling how I want to play. I don't have to play per everyone else's standards. I'm playing yeah. like this. That being said, I do W key now, but <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, something you just touched upon about saying the highs and lows. And that's something I found Tarkov, you know, really, you know, gets me is the it creates these flash flashball moments. Like I can remember certain certain maps or certain instances where like I remember that 40 minute cat and mouse with this one thing. And just I don't you don't get that from other games. You don't. Yeah. And especially, I mean, some of the some of the gunfights I feel like now are a lot shorter mm -hmm. than the meta used to be. And yeah. that's I think that's one of the things that if I've ever had a complaint about Tarkov, it's that I feel like some of the fights I used to get into lasted longer and I missed those fights. But I still get those moments. It's just you, ha you can't get caught obviously because then if you if you get caught and you're in like you don't know what's going on around you then obviously that fight's over quick because you're one tapped in the head and that's absolutely, it absolutely yeah. but <laughs> i've never had gunfights that felt so rewarding mm -hmm. in any other game besides Tarkov. yeah absolutely and now you know what was the hardest thing for you playing you know learning the game i mean i like i want to say map knowledge but yeah. I played Siege, so I like I had put a huge like importance on map knowledge in Siege. Yeah. Um, like I said, I played on a TV hooked up to my old PC, <laughs> so I could not peek anything because I would die. So I just played uh Valkyrie with her cams mm -hmm. and I got really good at like finding cam locations and like getting good at my call outs to make sure that my teammates could kill everybody. <laughs> like, and so I feel like I put such a huge importance on map knowledge, like right off the rip. And there's still th certain things that, I mean, I don't even know. I don't know streets yet because my new, like my PC is starting to die on me and cannot handle streets. But, um, I, it was learning how to engage enemies in ways that are beneficial to me. It, like, how do I explain this? Like in COD, you know, you just like push, you just push, right. you just kind of blindly push. And just, if you die, you die, that's whatever. But Tarkov, it was one of those things where it's like, okay, well, like, do I ADS here? Do I point fire here? Do I hold this corner? Do I sing this corner? And just think like all those like little things. Like it took me forever to learn anything about left hand, right hand peeking. Like uh -huh. I was constantly left hand peeking people and wondering why they could see me in the middle of the hallway. Cause I right. just, that was just not something that I had ever taken like the time to really like yeah. think about. And so I think that learning those little small details and fights is what really changed the whole game for me. Yeah, absolutely. And now, you know, do you prefer to play solo or with a group of people? I prefer duos. Yeah. I solo. I, I feel like I can get disheartened easily. It's really easy to talk to chat in that way. Yeah. So I feel like if I'm, if I'm, streaming and stuff like obviously solo is really nice because it's really easy to talk to chat but i prefer duos because it's really nice having like at least like a one other person mm -hmm. to like handle situations and i would say that i would prefer solo previously but i feel like so many people are running in groups now yeah that i it's nice to have one person with me because i'm constantly running into like four mans five mans yeah. like three mans whenever i'm solo and you, it's good. It's good until all three of you are like all three of them are swinging you, and you can obviously only take like shoot so many bullets before yeah. you go down. Like, yeah, and absolutely. I, so I think duo is like the golden number for me. I do not like running anything more than four mans. Mm -hmm. Four mans uh, even stress me out. I'll do it with the right group of friends, but yeah. the whole time, like I'm, I'm like if I die, like I've like already mentally prepared for it because we're in a big group, and I'm like these do not work. <laughs> yep, absolutely. You know, the other thing with playing with groups, that everybody has a different call out. You know, it's like if you're playing with somebody who you haven't played with before, like they're calling something like the red house something different versus the, oh. you know, and it's just having to learn that at the same time, the stress levels up with multiple people on your team, just try not to TK somebody. Yeah, that's one of the things I like about playing with Try is that her call outs can be <laughs> like crazy different than other people's, obviously. I mean, the way that she calls certain like rocks on woods, <laughs> like different names and stuff like that. But then playing with her and then playing with people that I've also played with her when everyone starts catching on to those, it's like the perfect call out now because like it might be really crazy to someone who's never played a try right. before, 
but once they learn it's like i know exactly where everyone is at all times <laughs> yeah absolutely oh. and the other point i wanted to get back to was you know you were talking about playing solo and streaming tarkov is that perfect game i think from a streaming standpoint it gives you lots of opportunities to talk to your chat and it's you know pestily talked about talked about it it's almost like a movie you have your intro and it's just it's just such a great game to stream and loading times and everything like yeah. that stash times you know there's lots of people that'll complain about you know how long a matching queue takes and i'm like i have i love when a matching queue takes too long because that just means more conversation because i probably i'm probably gonna die in like two seconds yeah. anyways like <laughs> <laughs> but now i gotta sit here and i get a jam and chat with chat exactly yeah and then, and you actually just touched on another point there the stash so as a streamer Tarkov has this unique thing where you have a stash to manage and do you manage your stash on stream or do you like, I always say I'll do it off stream. I never do. <laughs> and now, is your stash a do. mess or is it organized neatly? It's so bad <laughs> right now. It's, it's not cause I died a lot. So there's lots of extra space, yeah. but, um, <laughs> but it's, it's, I'm a hoarder. I, every game I've ever mm -hmm. played in Skyrim, I was always constantly heavy because the amount of books I had on me was insane <laughs> because whenever I bought a house, the first thing I want to do was fill up the bookshelf. Okay. So I was like, I need to have the books. And they're like, they're not important though. I'm like, but they are for aesthetics. <laughs> yeah. So always been a hoarder in every game that I've ever played. It's always bit me in the butt. Tarkov is one of the, one of the ones where the consequences are a lot more obvious. <laughs> yep. So now we got some hype coming up for Arena, and you got the chance to play it out at TwitchCon. So what was your take on it? I enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, very fast paced. I, as somebody that likes to W key, you know, I feel like I enjoyed that a lot because it was I get to enjoy the Tarkov gun mechanics mm -hmm. while also sprinting around a W keying. One of the things I feel like with with Arena is I probably wouldn't play it as much as I'd play regular Tarkov, be, only because. I think it kind of reminds me of my Siege days. Yeah. And I I used to play an ungodly amount of Siege. I think that's the only other game that I have, like, close to the same hours as Tarkov. Because um, I feel like Tarkov has more, you know, obviously, like, with the quests and stuff, there's more direction. There's more, mm -hmm. like, I get on, and I'm like, this is, like, I have to do this. Um, But Arena will be one of those things that it will be, like, my end of the stream, wind down, like, let's go get some W keying, like, gunfights in, yeah. and... I'm just, I'm so stoked for it to come out. <laughs> <laughs> so it's going to be sort of like Veritas used to end it is he used to end his streams when he's playing Tarkov with the uh, the pressure washer game. So Arena is going to be your sort of end of night. Yes. Pressure. OK, something I want to ask you. So being in the siege side of things, what was that community like? Because I've, I've heard mixed things on the siege community is like it's just it can be very toxic and especially towards uh, female streamers or female pe yeah. females in general. I never got very into the Siege community based off of how I was treated in game, yeah. if that makes sense. Like, I have a couple friends that I've made um, from back when I streamed uh, Siege. One of my really good friends, um, his name's Legs McShefflin. We've been friends for the last, like, three years. Um, we met on Siege because my team hated that I was a girl. Yeah. I, my name is Miss Trash, which is usually, like, immediately like they see miss and it's like i'm already getting shit yeah. then i also used to like i said run ttv in my name um and they don't like ttvers either so i was it was double whammy ttv and miss like yeah. i was i was gonna get hate and i met legs because my entire team was um tking me calling oh, me all wow. sorts of like slurs they were typing it like all sorts of things to chat like i had to meet their wow. mics i had to meet their like chats and everything like that you know and like i spent most of the game just on the death screen and they like they were TKing me into like to the point that they were getting kicked out of the game because that's oh like you if you if you TK too much you you're booted and we're playing yeah. ranks so I can't get a new teammate like they just they get kicked out like that's they don't care about their rank anymore wow. they only care about harassing this one person and legs and all of his friends because I think he was in a like a like yeah he I knew he had at least one other friend with him both of them came into my chat they gave me a follow they added me they're like i'm so sorry that happened to you like yeah whatever and then boom me and legs have like been playing games forever since we played Baldur's gate together we're playing elden ring together we like i got i at least got like a really good friend out of it but yeah. it was one of those things where how people treated me in the game didn't ever really make me want to like be a part of the community yeah. um 
And I mean, I still run into issues like that on Tarkov. Like I don't VoIP as much as like a lot of other content creators. I feel yeah. like um, I should, you know, that's a lot of like content I'm missing out on. Right. But the fear and anxiety of getting certain hate yeah. from people kind of prevents me from it. Um, I... I'm usually I, I usually can kind of take everything off with like a grain of salt, but yeah. especially when I was going through the period of time where I was really in my head, obviously yeah. anxiety wise, like I just I didn't not want the added stressor, so I just didn't VoIP ever. Yeah. Just like I don't want to like I don't want them to know. Yeah, and I just I'm always amazed that you know there's still people out there like this that you know like just because you're a girl you're gonna get it just makes no sense, especially with how many girls I feel like there's actually a lot of women that do play Tarkov. I, right. I mean, I don't run into as many women in game yep. as I do like other men and stuff like that. But um, I mean, out of like the streamers and stuff, there are quite a few, like that, like the chat at group is yeah. huge and I love it. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's some, something I found, you know, in this, you know, when I discovered Tarkov was the amount of fantastic kick-ass female creators and streamers. There's just, it's, I think that's why, you know, part of the reason why you know, I think Tarkov so, is so good. Yeah. I I think that coming from a game as toxic as Siege was and then coming into Tarkov and then dealing with like some of the toxicity in it um it I, it pales in comparison to Siege yeah. like it's I mean and then I played League too and League is, is maybe just as if not worse um wow. toxicity wise um and so Tarkov is one of those things where it's like I'm way more terrified to talk to my team in a Valorant game than I am yeah. to VoIP right like i i will voip and i've been getting better about it you know i have my uwu buttons on my soundboard <laughs> that i'll go around and i i uwu to at people to see like what like if it makes them push me or something like that but i don't i don't run into as much toxicity anymore yeah. i think and i think it's because there are so many wonderful like women in yeah. the tarkov community that a lot of people have like kind of changed their mindset on that yeah absolutely people like endra too you know like yeah. she, like she has such a huge following and i know so many people that come Came from her community that you know like every they're like yeah every time I, I meet a girl in tarkov now like i'm like they're like you know i'm i try to be nice because i i've seen how crappy mm -hmm. it can be and i'm like yeah because when yeah. it happens like live in front of you you're not someone that's ever experienced that you know and you watch someone else have to experience it and it just sucks <laughs> absolutely yeah and and you know people like you know ammunition and sigma just you know yep. strong women who are fantastic creators in a space in the tarkov space yeah. yeah, and now you briefly said cha uh, the chatettes. So, what is the chatettes? What are the chatettes? Nixia started a Discord for the chatettes because she felt like all of the women really needed a place that we can just all just be girls. Uh, we have like, and it's, so she started that. She started the little chatettes um, stream team so that we can all find each other and connect and just. I think she was feeling like um, we needed a, a a way to connect to other women a little bit better because yeah. I know that a lot of people get really scared about reaching out, but especially like I I am always so intimidated to reach out to other girls. There's no reason why I just because I think it's because I want to be their friends so bad that I just get two in my head mm -hmm. like like with try and everything. Like I said, I'm like, I want to be her friend. How do I be her friend? Like it, it, it took me a second to talk to her, and when I did, boom, instant best friends. But it, yeah. the 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 wind up to it is 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 the is the hard part. And so she kind of made a middleman area where we now have a Discord, so we can all talk about things. And if there's somebody that comes in really really sexist to mm -hmm. our group, like or like into our stream, we can let everybody know, hey, watch out for this guy. You know, like we can really just like protect each other. Yeah, and. I think it's really awesome. Yeah. Yeah. When Nixia was on, I thought that was the coolest thing about the chat ads is like, you like you said, somebody sex has come in, boom, it's all across all the other chat ads know to yep. keep an eye out. And I think that's just, that is really an awesome idea. It, it's cleaned out my chat a lot that I'm able to have a lot of fun yeah. and not have to deal with as many toxic situations. I think the most toxic I had I ever still deal with is if I ever change my name to like my my in, my, my stream name. Yeah. And then every now and then someone comes in mad about the way that they died. But other than that, like I don't I don't get nearly as much hate as I used to when I was a baby streamer yeah. who just had everybody come in and just say whatever that they wanted to me. Yeah. That's good. Uh, and now something I missed 
to ask you about earlier. You said you got raided by Pesley. You know, when somebody raids you and they, you know, they bring their massive party to your little, you know, two bedroom apartment, nothing prepares you for that. I was in the bathroom when it happened. <laughs> no way. I was on my BRB screen, <laughs> ran to the bathroom, and I hear my mod go, wait, Bailey, get back here. And I hear my raid command or my raid alert. I'm like, God, that's weird. And I come back in and boom, 3,000 people. And I'm just like, I was peeing. I'm sorry. Oh, my God. What is going on? Like, I just instant panic. Yep. Oh, God. Just nothing prepares you for that. And especially when you're AFK, that makes it 12 times worse. Uh, <laughs> the heart starts pumping. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's something so unique with, you know, with with streaming is when that happens. And, you know, I've had a couple opportunities where I got to, you know, I've streamed to, you know, single digits, but when you get rated and then handing that rate off to somebody who was also a single digit, just to see how happy and excited they are. It's just, you just made yeah. their day or week. I think that's, that's a really cool thing as well. You know, when it comes to streaming. Yeah. In my discord, I have um, the role where the live now role so that if I want to um, raid out, I can find people within the community, like, or like my community too. Like yeah. maybe uh, there's somebody that I didn't know streamed and I'm not following. And so I can like pop in there and be like, Oh, this person's streaming. And I've done that a couple of times and have got tears yep. going in and just raiding and just being like, hi, how are you? And it's just, it, it, it always feels really, really good. Yeah. Like I, it feels nice to give people the chance to, show show what their stream is and yep. show who they are and give them like a, a an area where they can just maybe get a couple more followers yep. and stuff like that and just feels really cool excellent and now something you know how would you describe somebody coming into the miss trash stream for the first time what are they expecting chaos and good music <laughs> <laughs> i scream a lot because i am i'm very jumpy and i listen to a lot of a lot of heavy metal <laughs> all right <laughs> oh. And then adding on to that, how would you describe the Miss Trash community? Um, I think we're all we all joke a lot. I don't think anyone takes anything serious ever, which is can be like a lot, but it's I feel like also could be really uh, refreshing. I get a lot of people come in that tell me that you know like they've had a really long week at work, they had a really long day, they're going through a really tough time, and they come in and they get to joke around with everybody and goof off and it makes them feel a lot better even if it's just for like just for the hour that they're in the chat um yeah. and that's what i wanted I, that's what i've always wanted to do is create a space where people can feel comfortable to like goof off be themselves and feel better like i said i started streaming and was putting in a lot of hours in a really crappy situation and i always wanted to be like i don't want anyone to feel how i did yeah. and if I can give someone that space, I feel like I've won. Yeah. Nice. So. And, you know, when it comes to TwitchCon, so you said San Diego was your, was your first TwitchCon. And I yeah. think I think that was a lot of people's first TwitchCon, especially after yeah. COVID. And something unique for, you know, content creators like yourself, when you go to something like a TwitchCon, you know, you're there sort of like you're there as a person looking at your, you know, sort of your peers and people you look up to. And then you turn the other way and there's your community looking at you that way. And that's got to be yeah. a, something special. That's surreal. I had people coming up and asked me to sign their badges. And I was just like, I didn't even know you anyone was going to know who I am. <laughs> like, that's just it's so crazy. Now, did, had you practiced your your Miss Trash signature before? Okay, all right, good. I had, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, for a subathon, I said that I would give out signed sweatshirts, but then I, after the subathon, was like, oh my God, how do I have a cool signature? And I, my dad's an artist. He d designed one of my tattoos, and oh, I literally nice. went to him, and I said, help me with this. <laughs> <laughs> so... I feel like we came up with a cool signature and I get compliments on it all the time. Now they're like, you have such a cool signature. Like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I win. <laughs> yes. Oh. But yeah, so nothing compares hard. you though to that, you know, for, for that. Yeah. It's, um, I would, I wouldn't say that like I got, I got recognized by friends, obviously, more than anything else. Yep. Um, but I also didn't hang out around the convention a lot in the San, like the San Diego one, I think because I was so anxious yeah. about everything that I didn't really give myself a chance. Whereas I hung out at the convention a lot more for Vegas. So then Vegas, was, I got to meet a lot more people that are like, I watch your stream. This is really cool. And I'm like, oh, crap. Okay. Like, hi. Like, <laughs> like awesome to meet you. Like, this, is, this is insane. 
Uh, and now, you know, when it came to the Vegas TwitchCon, what was the highlight? You walked away from them like, wow, that was cool. Was it the arena? Or was it just hanging out with all, you know, so many peers? And what was the big I think, thing? I think it would be hanging out with everybody. Um, I had gone into Vegas with really bad imposter syndrome, really bad anxiety, I'm telling myself everyone hated me because I took such a long break from Tarkov that I didn't really know how to like reassert myself back in. And like, mm -hmm. I, you know, like, I mean, I was like, I feel like I disappeared from everybody's lives for a little bit when I was doing my own thing. You know, I, I was playing a lot of league solo or I was playing league with like, just like people in my community. I was not talking to anybody within the Tarkov community very, very much. Like I was preaching out to like try and hay bales a bit. Um, Cause they've always been like really close with me, but I, I was just, I kind of was like, all right, I'm going to go into hiding for a little bit. And I was so worried about coming out of hiding because you spend that like much time away from certain people you don't know if it's going to be the same or you yeah. don't know if they're going to like welcome me back in with open arms the way that they like normally would and stuff like that yeah. so it was like really intimidating in that aspect but meeting everybody again and then like realizing that like that was like such like a dumb way of thinking because of course that they like I, these are still my fucking friends like right <laughs> um i remember one of the conversations i had because i was Little, I was a little tipsy trauma dumping to Ash and Batty in the <laughs> casino. And both of them were just like, you're like our little sister. Like, we'll beat someone up for you if you need. Like, like that was just like one of the most reassuring conversations I've ever had. And that might have been such like a small like thing for them to say, like, because they didn't like, you know, they don't. That probably wasn't like such a huge thing, but it was so big for me because I'm like, oh, my God, people do love me. I <laughs> forgot. Like, it's just. Yeah. Uh... So that. All of those moments, I think, really, really stuck out with me of like just like the the really good connections yeah. that I reminded myself that I had. Nice. And BSG was at TwitchCon too. Yeah. So yeah, that was really cool. Yeah, you know, meeting the the people that created this wonderful game that we play yep. must have been really awesome. I met I met more of the devs. I didn't I didn't I didn't meet Dakota. <laughs> I was really intimidated that I was just kind of like, I stood off to the side. I was like, I'm like, I'll stare at him from over here. I can't, I can't say hi, man. Like Andrew gave me so crap or so much crap about it. She's like, go say hi. I'm like, no, I can't. <laughs> like, and, uh, uh, I got, I got to meet like Apple and everything. And, yeah. and like Apple is, is so freaking sweet. I, it was really nice meeting everybody. Oh, nice. And now was there any creators that you stood back and just like, watch that you you're like i should have went up and just say said hey i'd say well hutch is one that i technically said hi to yeah. but like it was really quickly because he was having a conversation with someone standing next to me and i didn't like it was one of those like i'm like holy crap this is crazy hutch is right here hutch is really tall this is nuts like, like <laughs> um and who else I feel like I tried my best to be social this most recent time. So I've tried to put myself out there the yeah. best I could, um, which is very intimidating. Um, but you did it. I didn't. Yeah, I watched, I watched I watched Summit play yeah. a little bit, but I did not approach Summit even remotely. <laughs> I was just like, holy crap, there's no way I can have a conversation with him. <laughs> like, I'm a fr I'm a freeze up. <laughs> oh, awesome. <laughs> Uh, and, you know, this past month, so you had TwitchCon and you played Twitch Rivals and you were in mm -hmm. a, a hunt tournament as well. Yep. Holy cow. So let's let's what was the Twitch Rivals like? That was crazy. Um, I've always wanted to do Twitch Rivals. I've always like I've, I've watched my friends do it, but I've never been on the competitive side of Tarkov. Mm -hmm. So I've as I've never been like anyone like I'm I'm never the one that anyone would ask to be on their team, um, because of the fact that like I was I like swore off tourneys. I did um two tourneys yeah before Twitch Rivals, and the first one was with Sick. It was Endra's tourney. The entire tourney I died. Oh. Like I would walk into a building and immediately was dead behind a wall. And yeah. it was a duo tourney. So I it was with Sick and I felt so bad oh. the whole time for Sick. Cause Sick was playing like the best day of Tarkov he'd had. And I was playing the worst day oh. of Tarkov I've ever had. I felt awful. And then I think so that really like got me in my head about yeah. tournaments i was like i'm never doing a tournament like that was too stressful i think i got off and cried oh, like no. i was just oh i was a wreck and then i tried again with another duo tourney on labs yeah um 
And that one was really fun. And that one made me feel better. But I also was playing labs a lot at the time that mm -hmm. it more felt like I was just playing a map that I was like pretty comfy with. Yeah. Um, and that, so with the hunt tourney, it was on customs and customs, like I said, is my comfort yep. map. So that felt good. I didn't do very well, but I didn't do terrible either. Like, I feel like I learned a lot from the experience and the same thing with Twitch rivals. I feel like I learned a lot yeah. about tourneys. I might not have like performed, you know, like the best or, you know, like been like the craziest competitor out there. But I, I learned a lot about not just like focusing on like PVP and stuff like that, mm -hmm. but focusing on, um, other ways to get points, like how, like the best ways, like how, like, like strategizing within yep. the tournament, like for hunt, I struggled with that a lot because I only PVP, like I got 55th place, but I had some of the most kills compared to a lot of other people because I wasn't getting any of the filters that I was supposed to get out, <laughs> which are 17 points of pop. Ooh. And I'm only getting five points right. for every kill I get. Like, uh. I don't know. So there Ways, to, ways like that where you like things that you wouldn't think about because you've never done attorney before that learned. I was just like, okay, well, now I know next time. Exactly. Yep. And now who did you so, play with uh, Twitch Rivals? Twitch Rivals, I was on Julie's team. I played with Julie and Undead. Okay. Essence. And then and Hunt? I, Hunt, I uh, was a solo. So. Oh, okay. All yeah. right. And now, and, you know, yeah. after doing them, are you going to, you know, do them again? I think I definitely want to do tournaments more now. Excellent. Um hunt tournament i feel like i got what i got 55th out of like 100 mm -hmm. and that I, I i keep saying i'm like i'm average i'm average like that's that's how <laughs> i took out of it is, um you one of those last. things where yeah i wasn't last and i mean in twitch rivals we were i think we were second to last but we weren't last <laughs> exactly yeah i think that's what i saw from julie is like yep that's a victory it's good <laughs> well and me and, so the issue with twitch rivals me and julie didn't know streets the only uh, one that knew streets was undead and then labs me and undead were the only ones that knew labs julie didn't <laughs> julie kn knows labs, but she doesn't know like the call outs right so there was like times where like we'd get into a fight and i'm like julie stay in this room do not move i'll be right back and i would just leave <laughs> <laughs> oh but, um i feel like i played really well in twitch rivals but again it was one of those things where it's like the only time I played the best was on labs because I knew that map yeah. and streets. Um, the only one that knew the map was undead, but undead was having like the worst luck. Oh. So he would die and then have to sit there and guide us to extract, which was very stressful when every scab is a rogue. Oh God. Yes, <laughs> so, <that's right. laughs> oh. That was just very terrifying experience. Um, so I feel like streets really brought us down, but only because of like a general, like, map knowledge yep. like different difference but i i mean i julie and undead are both really really great people and so like we we could have been like hold and bottom the leaderboard and i wouldn't care like i had a blast with them yeah um That's and then undead or no, not undead sorry hunt i enjoyed because um of the fact that um it was solo so i can kind of like really see like myself and like my performance yeah. and see like what do I, I personally need to improve? Like I can really like focus on myself and be like, okay, so what am I doing? What could I be doing? What could I do next time? Yeah. Right. Like and then now I see uh, you're doing loot fest. Mm -hmm. And now what is loot fest? Um, it's a gaming convention in like Dallas, Fort Worth. It's going to be a lot smaller than TwitchCon. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a lot more chill. There's a lot of people from the Tarkov community going, which is why I, I'm really trying to force myself to go because it'd be nice to hang out with everybody again i think after twitchcon i decided just how after how good it felt mm -hmm. i was like i need to do that more like i need to leave my basement uh <laughs> more than a couple times a year like <laughs> yep uh, um i'm really excited about that excellent. and you're doing a, a meet and greet I'm not doing a meet and okay. greet because um, I was just one of like the I, I hadn't known about it until Fudge was like, hey, everybody go. And I was like, OK, I'll go. <laughs> um, I did get a creator badge, though, which is really cool. Excellent. And I mean, the people at Lufest have been chatting with me a little bit about it. Yeah, really nice. Nice. Yeah. Fudge and all, Fudge is an awesome guy. Big heart. Yep, I love Fudge. Yep, absolutely. And, now, you know, when you're not streaming, what are some of the things you like to do? So, you know, you write, write, you like to write and mm -hmm. concerts. 
I go to lots of concerts. I watch an ungodly amount of anime. Um, I've been watching a lot of anime in my Discord with my community the last week, especially because uh, there's a couple shows that are we not none of us are up to date on. Yeah. And every I'm like, I want to watch this, but I don't really want to watch it alone. They're like, well, we'll watch it. And then, boom, there's like 12 of us just sitting and watching like an entire season in a night. <laughs> <laughs> I like movies a lot. I... I, I I had my top five movies like kind of ready to rapid fire answer, but I I watch a lot of movies. All right, let's I watch a lot top of horror five. movies. Um, so Fight Club, Midsummer, V for Vendetta, Saving Private Ryan, and um, gosh, I always struggle. Uh, Memento. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah, Saving Private Ryan. Nothing. Nothing compared. That that opening scene is just. Oh my god. It's surreal. Yeah. I watch a lot of horror movies, I watch a lot of war movies, and I watch a lot of musicals. I, it's probably a really weird mix, but <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. That uh World War 1 movie too where it was sort of done in one take, 1914, that was another good one. Or 18 I was, Yeah, 1914 or 1917. 1917, yes. That was so That good. one was insane yeah. to watch. I enjoyed that movie a yeah. lot. I there's one that I just recently watched that was really really good. Um, it's a Guy Ritchie film. Yep. It's about um, what's it called? The v- oh uh, Afghanistan one, right? Yeah, but the one with about the translators. Yeah, with uh, Jake Gyllenhaal, phenomenal. Oh, okay. Watched that the other night. I was really really happy with it. Um, it was really stressful, but yeah. it was really good. <laughs> yeah, I love a guy. Snatch is probably my favorite movie of all time, and that's you know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love that movie. <laughs> uh, the dialogue, the way it was shot, is just so many cool things, you know. Any anything with Jason Statham, I've used, I've I've pretty much seen. Yeah, I went through a huge sta- Jason Statham like phase. That's yeah. the word I was looking for. <laughs> <laughs> and so, Snatch was like one of the one of the movies that my dad showed me. Actually, he was yeah. like, "Yeah, you should watch this." And I was like, "This is." hilarious but also i'm so glad we have subtitles on (laughs) especially when brad pitt's talking the pikeys (laughs) yes absolutely (laughs) but like you know there's like the scene with bullet tooth tony when you know talking about the replicas and the camera switches along and there's you know oh it's just yeah so many good shots I Richie does a really yeah. good film. And there's that, you know, I, I, you know, so I'm old. I have the DVD still. There's actually a, you know, when they were shooting the boxing scenes, they didn't have enough extras. So they basically, you know, every cam- every time there's a new camera angle, they had all the extras swing around and fill in. But I didn't know yeah. that. That's so funny. Yes. Oh my gosh. Wait, now I'm going to look for that next <laughs> yeah, time. You see everybody wearing <laughs> the same outfits because yeah. That is so funny. Yeah. Such uh, a great movie to keep my eye out for that there's a one movie i have on disc that um i don't have it over here um gosh i can't why am i blanking on the name right now too I, it, it used to be in my top five i used to always sit, immediately call it my top five but it's uh with the guy from Wa- walking dead that uh, plays daryl uh it's like him and a brother you know oh, what i'm talking about yeah boondog saints thank you yes i couldn't think of the word boondog yes. <laughs> I you, I have bo- like the first and the second movie on Blu-ray. Yeah. Because I if I like a movie an ungodly amount, I try to get the Blu-ray. Mm-hmm. So I have uh, like Midsummer Collector's Edition and I have I'm really embarrassed to say this out loud, but I have the entire Twilight series on <laughs> Blu-ray extended editions. <laughs> so. <Yep. laughs> oh, awesome. Yeah. Boondock. <laughs> that was a great movie, too. Yes. Oh, God. Yes, absolutely scene where they come down with the ropes is yep. like my favorite just because of the banter right before it's like yep. an action movie what is this and it's like yeah actually you are oh <laughs> uh, well hey you survived the podcast thank you so much for doing this it was wonderful <laughs> to meet you it was nice meeting you it was nice chatting with you yeah but before i go so you know how triangle called you out now it's your turn to call out somebody in your peer group or somebody you think has has a good story and and should come on um, I would say Hay Bales or Undead Essence. I think you should talk to both of them. All right. We'll Undead Essence is going to be really funny because I think it's going to be really awkward. But <laughs> Bailey is really, is, she is one of the people that I watch the most in yep. the Tarkov community. Um, she's just recently getting back into Tarkov again, too. So right. I think she'd, she'd have a lot of really cool things to say. All right. So now is Undead going to be like, why did you do that to me? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, hey, you have a wonderful time down at Loot Fest. And uh, yeah, good luck to you. 
Thank you so much.